Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is actually going to be helping me out today, so we can give you a little bit more variety. Everyone say hi! Number 10. Peter Nears Peter Nears was one of the most horrifying people that ever lived. He allegedly slaughtered 544 people, including 24 pregnant women. It's said that he was a master of black magic and had all kinds of bizarre powers. Supposedly, he could turn himself invisible in the blink of an eye and could even transform into a cat or a goat. It's believed he garnered these strange powers by eating his victims and carrying around a leather pouch filled with hands and feet. Peter was born as a peasant in 16th century Germany. It was a time of war that undoubtedly played a role in who he became. After the peasant uprising of 1525, known in the history books as the German Peasants' War and the precursor to the French Revolution, the country was in chaos. Crime rates soared, people were murdering each other left and right, and Germany was awash in anarchy from between 1570 to 1590, give or take a few years. It was during all this violence that Peter began to feed his darkest desires. He started out by robbing people and soon became the leader of 24 bandits who terrorized the European countryside for roughly 11 years. They killed, stole, and even massacred rival gangs. They even marched into villages and towns and would attack law-abiding citizens for their goods and gold. Peter and his bandits were captured in 1577 and tortured, at which point he confessed to at least 75 murders. Some of these explained local women who had mysteriously disappeared. Somehow he managed to escape imprisonment and continue on with his sinister ways until 1581. By this time, Peter was well known across the country. One night he stayed at a local inn, and the innkeeper came into his room while he was taking a bath. They discovered his leather pouch full of body parts and knew exactly who he was. The innkeeper quickly alerted the authorities, and Peter was captured again. It's believed he was arrested so easily because he was separated from his magical objects, which were believed to make him invisible. On the first day of his imprisonment, he had parts of his flesh skinned off, and then hot oil was poured into the wounds. The second day, his feet were greased and shoved into burning coals in an attempt to burn him alive. On the third day, Peter was strapped to the braking wheel, the infamous torture device designed to break bones and crush someone to death. Although he endured all this torture, he survived. Some believe he was protected by some deal with the devil. However, he finally died after the executioner chopped off all his limbs. Turns out the demented black magician wasn't immortal after all. Number 9. The Imperial Poisoner Locusta of Gaul was one of the very first serial killers in the world. She was born in the countryside of Gaul in the first century during the Roman Empire. She learned to use herbs and natural ingredients to create poisons and began her career selling those poisons to people in the city who wanted to assassinate their enemies. She was basically an arms dealer selling her toxins to people who openly wished to commit murder. It was around the year 54 AD when she was finally picked up by Roman authorities and imprisoned. They realized she was behind multiple deaths, albeit not technically by her own hand. She merely supplied the weapons used in the killings. But before she could be put to death, Empress Agrippina the Younger decided to take Locusta into her service. She wanted to murder her husband Claudius, thereby ensuring that her son Nero would inherit the throne. And yes, this is the infamous Nero who would go on to be one of the worst emperors in Roman history. First, Locusta supplied a poison intended to upset the stomach of Claudius's guard and personal food taster. Once he was out of the way, she would be able to poison Claudius's favorite food, a mushroom dish which he did not hesitate to eat. However, Claudius was a clever man. He always had a feather on hand. Just in case he suspected poison, he could use the feather to tickle the back of his throat and make himself vomit. But his plan failed because Locusta also poisoned the feather. Once he was dead and Nero was on the throne, he recruited Locusta to be his personal assassin. She was used to kill his own brother, Britannicus, then kept on as the imperial poisoner. Nero granted his favorite assassin large estates. She became wealthy, and we don't actually know how many people she killed. 
After Nero died in 68 AD, many of Nero's personal cronies were sentenced to death by Emperor Galba who succeeded him. One of those executed was the Queen of Poison, Locusta. Number 8. Jack the Ripper Jack the Ripper was behind what is now known as the Autumn of Terror in 1888. In Whitechapel, London, five women were officially victimized by the Ripper. They're known as the Canonical Five and include Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly. Each of these women was killed within a mile of the other, and their bodies were all mutilated in surgical and bizarre ways. Many of their internal organs had been removed as well, including their uteruses or kidneys. The London police believed that their killer had a learned knowledge of human anatomy. The women the Ripper targeted were mostly working girls, London prostitutes who skulked the streets at night looking for customers. But while they were skulking the streets, so too was Jack the Ripper. And although we know for sure that he killed five women, at least six other murders have been linked to him as well. One of them was the murder of Martha Tabram, found dead on August 7, 1888. She had been stabbed 39 times with two different knives, one of which might have been a bayonet leading authorities to believe that the killer was most likely a soldier or a sailor. One of the things that made Jack so hard to find was that although his victims had all been butchered, each one was killed in a different way. Take the night of September 30th, when both Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were killed. The woman had been killed by cuts to their throats, but Elizabeth hadn't been disemboweled. She had merely been murdered and left in the gutter. It was almost like Jack was already bored from brutalizing his first victim, but more likely he was interrupted. At the end of his spree in 1888, he never killed again that we know of. He came and went like a ghost, and over a hundred years later, we still don't know his real identity. Number 7. Ranavalona the Cruel Ranavalona the Cruel was born in 1788 in Madagascar. This is a large island off the coast of Africa in the Indian Ocean, described as a paradise on Earth. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, and it was once home to one of the most brutal queens in history. Ranavalona the Cruel declared herself queen in 1829. She killed all her rivals, including Prince Rakatobe, and she locked his mother in a cell and starved her to death. And this was only the beginning of her terror. The first thing she did was expel all the Europeans from Madagascar. She got rid of the merchants, the teachers, and even the diplomats. Trade deals with Britain and France were cancelled, and any European left after the banishment had their heads chopped off and stuck on pikes along the beach as a warning to foreign invaders. The Mad Queen went on to ban the teachings of Christianity, going so far as to torture and execute anyone who was caught worshipping Jesus or the Christian God. It's believed that between 1837 and 1856, she executed about a hundred Christians. She also replaced trial by jury with trial by ordeal, bringing back a barbaric practice from the Dark Ages. A person was made to eat three chicken skins and then drink poison juice. They would then bath and their innocence was based on whether the chicken skins came back up. If they didn't, that person was deemed guilty. Ranavalona died of old age on August 16, 1861. She was 79 years old and had reduced the Madagascar population from 5 million to about 2.5 million. Number 6. La Quintrala Catalina de los Rios y Lisberger, aka La Quintrala, was a Chilean aristocrat and landowner born in 1604. She was famous for her beauty and her flaming red hair, as well as her cruel treatment of her servant. Her legacy survives in Chile today as the epitome of wickedness and evil. La Quintrala allegedly practiced witchcraft. It was claimed that she murdered her own father using poison at the age of 18 and in 1624, she murdered a rich vassal from Santiago after luring him to her home with promises of intimate contact. She blamed the murder on a slave, who was then subsequently executed. Her favorite thing to do was kill her lovers. She murdered a man named Enrique Enriquez de Guzman, severed the left ear of another lover named Martin, and murdered a knight of Santiago after a passionate night of romance. An official investigation began because so many complaints had been brought up against Catalina. She was accused of 40 murders. 
but because of her insane wealth and status, the trial was postponed, stalled indefinitely, and she was released. She became a widow in 1654, another investigation started in 1662, but she died in 1665 of poor health before she could ever be brought to justice. Would you rather accidentally stumble upon a cult performing a ritual in the middle of the woods, or witness an exorcism of a close friend? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 5. Lu Pengli Lu Pengli was the nephew of Emperor Jing of China's Han Dynasty over 2,000 years ago, in 144 BC. He had four brothers, and each of them ruled a small province within the kingdom. Lu Pengli was arguably the worst provincial ruler of them all. He was described as arrogant and cruel, and would frequently go on expeditions to murder people and steal their stuff just for fun. He was a terrorizer, an early serial killer who inspired such fear in the townsfolk that nobody would leave their house at night because they were afraid of being murdered. In the beginning, his status as the nephew of the emperor kept him from any kind of punishment, but his killings grew so barbaric and overzealous that the emperor was forced into a position where he had to do something. He couldn't bear to execute his nephew, but he could banish him. In 116 BC, after three decades of ruthless murdering, Lu Pengli had his titles taken away and was reduced to a commoner. He was then banished to the countryside. We don't actually know what happened after that, as all historical records of Lu Pengli vanished after his banishment, but many historians believe he never stopped murdering. He just got sneakier about it. Number 4. The Witch of Kilkenny Alice Keitler was the Witch of Kilkenny. She was born to very wealthy parents in Ireland in 1263. She married a man named William Outlaw, a local banker, and they had a son together. Shortly after, William became ill and died suddenly. After his death, she married another wealthy man named Adam de Blund, and lo and behold, he too died abruptly and mysteriously. Now significantly wealthier, Alice married a third man by the name of Richard de Val, and yes, he died under dubious circumstances. It would be Alice's fourth husband who finally unraveled Alice's murder spree. They had been married for a few years, when suddenly her new husband John showed signs of illness. Just before he died, he changed his will so that all of his stuff would go to his young wife, Alice. But John's family wouldn't allow this to happen quietly. They immediately brought charges of witchcraft against Alice, saying she had bewitched John into leaving behind his fortune and then she killed him. She was accused of leading a coven of witches and lying with a demon called Artisan. As Alice was waiting in the dungeons of Kilkenny Castle to be burned at the stake, after being found guilty of witchcraft, she escaped, and after her escape, we have no idea what happened to her. Number 3. Chrisman Jennifer Tenga Chrisman Jennifer Tenga was one of the most prolific serial killers in German history, and one who may not have even existed. The story goes back to the 1570s when Chrisman allegedly set up a base deep in a cave somewhere in the forests of the Rhineland. Oddly enough, this was the same spot that Hitler set up camp almost 400 years later. Chrisman gathered a gang of robbers and began killing and pillaging across Germany and France. Legend has it he would kill any travelers he found wandering in the woods and sometimes even murder his own comrades in a fit of bloody rage. Legend states that Chrisman kept a journal documenting his 13 years of crime, and in this journal he detailed every single death he was responsible for. By the time he was captured, he had 964 murders logged in his book, and admitted he had been trying to hit the goal of a thousand. By far the most disturbing part of his story involves a woman he took hostage. He held this hostage in his cave lair for an unknown number of years. She gave birth to several of his kids, which he then promptly cooked and ate. Although there are plenty of stories of Chrisman's murder spree, historians say there isn't actually any evidence to back them up. Some believe his story may have started as partially true, a murderer lurking in the woods, but was embellished over the centuries. Number 2. Catherine Montvoisin Catherine Montvoisin, also known as La Voisin, was a fortune teller in France in the 17th century. She provided everything from poisons to aphrodisiacs, pregnancy termination drugs, and she even organized black masses and other paranormal events. 
She was the head witch, the top sorceress who was allegedly behind the killings of at least 1,000 people, but perhaps even 2,500. Catherine was deadlier in her short 40 years on this planet than the Italian Mafia. Business was booming up until the death of King Louis XIV's sister-in-law, the Duchess d'Orléans, by supposed poisoning in 1670. It was around that same time when business started to spiral. There were riots and people were accusing witches of abducting children. Plus, priests were receiving way too many confessions about people poisoning their loved ones and regretting it. All of these accusations led directly to Catherine Montvoisin. Fortune tellers began to be arrested in 1677, followed by a string of poisoners and sorceresses in 1679. And on March 12th of that year, Catherine was arrested outside Notre Dame de Bonne Nouvelle. She was put on trial on February 17th, 1680. The court convicted her of witchcraft, she was tortured mercilessly for two full days, and then was burned at the stake on the Place de Grève in Paris on February 22nd. Number 1. Thomas Griffiths Wainwright Thomas Wainwright was an English aristocrat born in October of 1794. He was an artist, author, and almost definitely a serial killer. He gained a reputation as being what they called a dandy back then, meaning a man who placed great importance upon things like leisurely hobbies and their own appearance. He was transported to a penal colony in Australia for defrauding the Bank of England in 1837. His murder spree happened before he committed fraud. It's believed that Thomas poisoned his sister-in-law so that he could collect a life insurance policy which he had recently taken out on her. It's also believed that he killed his uncle, his mother-in-law, and one of his best friends. Following the four killings he allegedly committed, Thomas fled to France, but he eventually got bored and returned to Britain, at which point he was promptly arrested. But since the prosecution lacked any kind of evidence for the murders, they simply came up with the forgery charge and shipped him to Tasmania. It was all they could do to be rid of him. Thomas stayed in the penal colony until he died of natural causes in 1847. To this day, we still don't know if he really did kill all those people. However, there are rumors that he carried strychnine on him, a strong odorless poison, in case he needed to do a quick and discreet murder. Which of these historical killers do you think was the absolute worst? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't yet and come back soon for more awesome videos from the channel. Bye.